going on guys this is Kazi welcome to another epic video you already saw the look we're going to be creating is just out of this world we're pushing this so much and that is the name of the game when it comes to music videos you really have to let that side go that says I like to make things look natural I like it where it's just more lifelike that's not true when you're working on music videos or when we watch music videos that we really love they're driven by emotions than anything else if you're thinking about a dream sequence then all of a sudden there's crazy glow and halo around everything it's an emotion that is just exaggerated to that level so that's what's going to be happening but obviously we're going to look at the hard skills like techniques to use uh, where it doesn't look cheesy it doesn't look 1990s it still looks really good and current but we we're just going to keep it on that cusp. We're going to push it as much as we can to get the most juice out of it. If you casually color grade your projects, but want to learn more about nodes and how to build a proper node tree, you came to the right place. In this free training, you're not only going to learn everything about nodes, you will also learn to build the perfect node tree, regardless of the project that you're working on. I will end the session with an extended Q&A. These questions came from you guys. Click the link in the description to sign up for this free training. All right, before we get into the tutorial section, uh, let's look at our talent spotting. And today I want to give a shout out to Gabi Bucataro. Not only his name is epic, his page is unreal. If you go and follow him, what you're going to get is not just epic looking posts and breakdowns, but the description. You can learn a lot from him. So definitely give him a follow. He's an epic, genuine human being to just get to know anyways. So do that. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and let's roll that intro. One thing that I do want to say before I even start that I will admit it. Bernie's version was way better. I tried my best, but it is what it is. This is what you guys got. So let's get to it. Now, this is the shot that we're going to be using. And you can already see how stylized it is, right? And this is what I was talking about. Like, even just look at the mixed lighting that they're using. So if I pause it on, say, this is our frame. So let's pause it on this. And first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my project settings and under color management, I'm going to change it to uh, RCM and select DaVinci White Gamut. So this is the space that I want to be in. As soon as I do that, it gives me a Rec. 709. And just what we said, look at how stylized this is. Honestly, you can print this and it's going to be great for a music video. The skin doesn't need to be perfect. Like this could be a look. You can just basically create your own world, your own reality. So obviously, you know how I do it. So we're going to take it a step further. So I'm going to create a no tree structure and then go ahead and start creating our own grade. Okay. So first node is going to be our color temperature. Second one could be just for a couple of different changes that we want to make, whether it's hue versus options or whatever have you. Then I'm going to do a layer mixer action. And that's where we're going to separate the skin and then create a really extreme look. Then we're going to have a couple of nodes here where we're going to do OFX. And then we're going to have our glow and we're going to have our grain. OK, and uh, maybe we'll do a vignette. So let's start building this out. So the first node is going to be my. Let's name them. So this one is going to be my temperature. So let's go ahead and start doing that, right? So I'm going to give it a little bit of, I'm basically right now just focusing on the skin and then I'm going to bring in some warmth. So just by doing these quick little steps, like look how much of the skin we were about to pull out and I can keep working on it. I'm just like looking at the skin and seeing like how realistic quote unquote it's looking or natural it's looking. So this is where we started to, this is where we are. And already we made a huge dent, right? So now one thing that I can do is I can go in here, go under qualifier and just like really grab the skin. And basically I don't care about how, you know, imperfect it is because that's not the focus. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy, hit 2X and then skin indicator. And I want to see where this is actually sitting. So I want to go under my offset and kind of add this kind of action to like really put it on that skin indicator. And then uh, we can just go back and cut these out. And now if I hit shift H and do before and after, 
you can see how big of a difference we're making in the skin. And now what I can do is just get rid of this because I want to apply this to the whole image. It's totally fine. That's what I'm going for. It's okay. And then in here, I want to do some HSL curves, right? And this is what I'm saying. Like with, you have to be experimental. You have to be bold when you're creating music video looks. So here, what I can do is just go under my cyan and start pulling this around. And what do I want to do? Maybe I want to put it somewhere around here. Like this is looking good. So I can just leave it here. Now in my temp and tint, what I can do is I can just really call it primary, meaning like I can do a lot of things here. So now I can go in my contrast and start giving it some contrast, to like really create some push look. And now what I can do is again, just take my lift, bring it down a little bit, take my gain and then raise it up. Take my gamma, raise it up and then gain, bring it down a little bit, something like that. And how are we looking? I mean, this is looking pretty good. If I turn it on and off, if I go all the way back to where we started, to where we are, I mean, we made a huge difference. So far, it's a pretty, could be a natural look, right? Like, I mean, it's not too pushed, but this is where we're going to start having fun. Again, this is not necessary what I'm about to do here, but you can do this. So I'm just going to swipe over there, grab her skin, and uh, let's make it better a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. I'm going to open it up and see if we can grab a little bit more. Honestly, I just want to grab more of her skin. So like really want to grab all of that. But when I do that, it literally grabs everything and that's not what we want. So I'm going to really control it with my Luma qualifier because all I really want is to grab just her skin like nothing else. And even if we do this, let's just say we do this, I'm going to add some noise, denoise it a little bit, and then I'm going to go under my blur and I'm going to crank it up a little bit. And uh, this is what we have. So we have that selected. Now what I'm going to do is in here, I can do a couple of different things. I can push the contrast a little bit more. So I'm going to go under my contrast slider and just push it a little bit more. We don't have to do anything extreme here. So that's all I'm doing here. Just pushing the contrast a little bit. And then if I do want to create a different kind of mood or look, I can do that in my gamma. So I'm going to click right here and under my gamma, I can start like punching in some sort of a color. If I really want to go for then, like, let's just say I'm going for that Terminator 2 blue, like I can really push that in here. Uh, but I think I want to kind of split the difference. I don't want to go too far. I can go back and just add a little bit of it. And now if I do before and after, this is not bad. I mean, this was one of those steps that was not crazy necessary, but if you do it, you know, it's not a big deal. And then in here, what I want to do is I have her skin selected, right? I'm going to go in my mid-tone and my log wheels, and I'm just going to add a little bit more, you know, to kind of pop her out, honestly. And uh, if I park it somewhere around here and do before and after, we can see that it is helping quite a bit. And now what I want to do is go under midtone detail and uh, pull it back. I'm going to keep it around negative 30 ish. And um, that's when like it just really softens up the skin. Like you can see it and it just evens out everything. So now if I take these two on and off, like look how big of a difference we're making, right? Without being too like in your face. And uh, then this is where the fun begins. I'm going to go in here. Open effects. These are some of the effects that you probably haven't seen me use before. And that's, again, because I'm working on a music video, I'm going to have a lot of fun and I'm going to do different things. OK, so I'm going to drop this guy on and it's perfect because it's giving me this like starburst effect, which is great. And I'm going to take and pull the color out of it. So it's all white and it's natural. Right. So now if I do before and after and you'll see how natural that is, like, look at this. And it's just there. Right. Now we can change the intensity of it, but once again, it's a music video. I want to have fun with it. So I'm just kind of, kind of leave it in. I mean, I can go in my blend and control it, but honestly, maybe we can just leave it at this and not go all the way. It's totally up to you, but let's just say we'll leave it somewhere around here. Now that's perfect. I'm going to go in here. All right, go away, little buddy. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drop in light rays and look what the light rays do. I absolutely love this effect. And all you have to do is just go under your length and stretch it. And just look at this, what we're creating. 
And again, all natural. Like, look at how this light is behaving to where she is. So it's super, super natural. It's nothing caked on. It's working off of her. These effects are great, okay? These effects are worth getting the studio version of Resolve. Now, what do I want to do? I'm going to go in here. I'm going to juice up my image even more. Again, experimental, be bold, keep pushing it. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drop that on. I'm going to go in my open effects. And uh, I'm going to go under my composite mode. I'm going to change it to soft light. And then go back and open up my image quite a bit like this. And um, under spread, like really just look at her face. I really want to bring that out. Like, you know, she's the focus. Like, so just really, really accentuate it and bring her out. And uh, I'm going to go under my blend. I'm going to pop this open so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back to kind of just split the difference between the two. I don't want to go too over the top with this. So this is already doing more than enough. Now, one thing that I can do, this is not necessary. I think this is looking very much like cinematic. It's highly cinematic, looks amazing. So I don't think this is necessary. But if you want to, you can. I can just throw a window right here, something like that, and uh, give it a shape. So here's the aspect. And then maybe just kind of make it a little bit bigger and then soften the F out of it, right? So like around somewhere around here, invert it. And now I can just go into my editable splines and I can just click on this guy and just grab it from here and kind of drag it down. Again, that is totally up to you. I think it's not necessary, but honestly, at the same time, it doesn't hurt. It's just really putting my eye where it needs to go, which is just focus right here. And at that point, nothing is ever completed in Kazi's universe without grain. Loud and proud, okay? So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this to 35,400. I'm going to bring the grain size up a little bit. I'm going to bring the strength up a little bit. Not too much. Just want to do enough to give it some weight. And come on, okay? So this is what we created Okay, for our music video look, and we just kept going. So I'm going to kill everything, and we're going to start to where we started to where we ended up. So this is what we have, which was the Rec. 709 look, and that was from our log footage. This was looking like, hey, we can print it. This looks great. Remember that? And then I went ahead, and I did my balance. And, uh, I mean, this could also be printed, right? I mean, we came a long way here. And then here, I just pulled out the skin a little bit more, showed you that technique. And then just, you know, played with our HSL curves and just added a little bit more Terminator blue, if you will. Um, and then in here, uh, I grabbed her skin and did some beauty work, but didn't really push too far because I knew there was so much more that I was going to do with OFX and everything. And then in here, just added a little bit of contrast and just added that punch in the image. And then we went ahead and created this starburst effect, which is epic and it's dynamic. It works in real time. And then these light rays just really bring everything together and just makes it look like she's on a stage. And then glow just like, you know, ties everything in. It just adds the right amount of saturation. It pops the skin out. I mean, it just creates that 3D effect. And then to further enhance that 3D effect, we created a vignette to pull her out even more without making it look cheesy. And then finally added some grain. And this is our final look. So again, before, complete before, to complete after, and it's a great look, it doesn't look fake, and it's just, this is me giving you permission when you're working on music videos, just push, man, just keep going. So now we can also add noise reduction, to be honest, so I mean, I can go in here and uh, use our typical technique that I show you guys, so we're going to go in here, nothing too crazy, so I'm going to go in and just crank this up to about... 4.8 ish i'm gonna break the chain of my chroma in spatial uh threshold and i'm gonna bring this up to about 6.8 ish and uh, that cleans it up quite a bit once again you can't really tell the difference on youtube but it does really help so now let's check out the final look in full screen
hopefully this was helpful and the purpose of this video more than just showing you all the cool effects that are in Resolve is to give you permission that, hey, if you're going to be working on a music video and if you want to stand out, trust me, you got to push that envelope. You have to push the limits. You have no idea how many times I get hit up where uh, a music video was graded, but the client wasn't happy. The director wasn't happy. The artist wasn't happy. And then they reached out to me and they were like, Kazi, we want you to just do what you do. Like, just take it to the next level. Just go nuts with it. And that's that's the name of the game when it comes to music video. There's so many different categories or industries within film. So like if you're working on commercials, you're going to create a different look. You're working on documentaries, completely different look. But for music videos, just know to let go and be experimental. On that note, do not forget to watch the one hour long training. Trust me, none of this matters unless you know how to put a proper no tree in place. And that's what's in the training and then some. So check it out. Link is down below. If you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and I will see you guys in the next video.